I have a great pleasure in inviting Professor R. Vail Raju. He is the Vice Chancellor of Anna University. Chennai is also served as Director of the Institute of Energy uh, Studies. And uh, I understand that uh, he has uh, multiple international awards to his credit and many other things. And most important as a teacher, like he is uh, recognized as the top 2% scientist. I think he is one of the, please give him a clap for being the 2% of the scientists, uh, which is a rarity in our country. Thank you very much for being with us. Please go ahead with your presentation. Thank, thank you very much, sir. Respected Colonel Dr. G. Thiruvasagam, President, Association of Indian Universities, Vice Chancellor, Amati University, Professor Dr. P. Kaliraj, Vice Chancellor, Bharadiyar University, Dr. Mrs. Pangaj Mittal, Secretary General, Association of Indian Universities, Professor Dr. Venkateshwarulu, Chairperson of this session, Vice Chancellors from various universities, and all other participants of this session. Very good afternoon. First, I would like to thank the organizers for the opportunity given to say a few words, some of my thoughts on this line. This topic is fourth goal of this uh, total 17 goals of sustainable development goals. And particularly, this, this is about uh, higher education, focusing on technical education. What is the present scenario? What is the challenge? What are the challenges? And how to overcome that? Considering inclusivity. That is the uh, focus of this session. And uh, there are 169 targets totally in the SDG and the 244 indicators. This is uh, on 4.4.1. Since morning, from the inaugural function, many speakers were telling about this uh, gross enrollment ratio of Tamil Nadu and India and even the world leading country like United States. Our Tamil Nadu, the gross enrollment ratio is 51.45. What is the reason, if you see, in Tamil Nadu, the major reason for this gross enrollment ratio much higher, to my thought, this uh, Chief Minister Kamaraj only coming to my mind. He, as a Chief Minister, he has initiated this noon meal scheme and to attract all the students, all the kids to the schools. That way, long back, he has initiated only, made this gross enrollment ratio very high as of now in Tamil Nadu, I feel. And also he has abolished the hereditary education policy and introduced free compulsory education up to the 11th standard. During his tenure, no village remained without primary school and no panchayat without a high school. Poor rural students did not have to walk, walk beyond three miles to reach the schools, nearest to schools. That was the reason now we have very good higher gross enrollment ratio. Considering all inclusivity, our state has done a lot of good thing. But really, it is going in the right track or not. If you see, there are some challenges. The challenges with the scientific uh, thermodynamic point of view, I am a mechanical engineer. With a science background, I want to tell why it is going like this. A few minutes I will take. This is any, any event happening in this world with the higher potential difference, any event to happen, some potential difference required. But when the potential difference is high, the action will happen, the system may get perfect, but at lot of disorder to the surrounding. Those who are studying would have understood about this concept of entropy. Same thing happens in our present education system also. With the low gradient, it will be sustainable. The sustainable, the meaning, it's about entropy increase only. When any event happen with the low entropy, entropy change, then sustainability will be there. With the high potential difference, the sustainability will not be there. It's a high disorder, high entropy increase. That is what happening in the present scenario. Though quantity is there, the quality we are not able to achieve because of that. So how to attain equilibrium? But it's not happening, though we have taken effort since several years. What is the reason? Yeah, the policy makers realize that there are several communities in the state that are socially discriminated against sharing position associated with the power and 
policy making. So they make lot of policies. Now also the Tamil Nadu government has introduced this 7.5% students from this government schools admission with the free education and all it's included. Whether it will give correct push for the growth of the nation or not that we have to analyze. If we see on that line what change in entropy taking place that is only the level of sustainability index. For example, there is a teaching learning process which I have shown in the right side. Teaching learning process. We need a very good teacher, a student to understand. If the knowledge level of the teacher is high and the urge to learn for the student is high, the potential difference is high. Always, okay, you should also understand this I is equal to V by R. Any flow to happen, there should be a potential difference. Always it will be associated with some resistance. So when we are trying to transfer knowledge from the teacher to the student, the potential difference will make it very high. But there will be, there are some resistance. Students, uh, the time of lecture, now I am giving the lecture at the last, as a last lecture, definitely the, the transfer will be with a lot of resistance. The nature of the subject, math subject we cannot teach at the end of, after, immediately after the lunch. So these are the resistance. So the flow will be good by reducing the resistance. But increasing the potential difference will give good perfection, but there will be a lot of disorder will happen in the surrounding. That is what now I want to tell what is happening in the present system. In the name of inclusivity, we are bringing all the students to the college. Whether all the students are getting good knowledge by attending the college or degree, I am saying it is not happening. Many of you also witnessed that. Because all the students now in the last uh, some 20 years, every year some 2 lakh students are coming to engineering colleges. But many of the students are not getting good knowledge during the 4 years. To my knowledge, I can say boldly, 80% of the students, if they don't join in engineering, their life would have been better. That is the scenario. So here only very few students, because of this large potential difference in the school education, we have not given the correct education. Suddenly we are putting them in the engineering education. The student capability and the teachers, what they want to teach, there is a high potential difference. That definitely will give a lot of chaos only. It's a law of nature. Law of nature, anything, if we want to make it with a high potential difference, in that phenomena, there will be a lot of chaos. Whatever be the event, you try to evaluate the result, outcome. What is the sustainability index? It will be very high disorder. Lot of entropy increase. That is what here happening. The parents, they admit the students. Uh, as if because they are all uneducated people, they send their students to engineering college or uh, some technical education, medical education. They are not seeing their capability because school education was not good enough to learn this engineering course. So what happens resulted with a lot of chaos. They are wasting their four years' time. Their parents lose their property. And uh, after this, a lot of chaos happening in the fa family. So these are the results, a disorder happening because of, because of wrong decision and high potential difference we want to give education. That is what happening. So overcome the social anxiety through unbiased selection. So what major challenge faced by the students through reservation owing to prevailing policy and the system. Okay, we need a reservation system, but the reservation system worked very well some 20 years or 30 years ago. When there were only 2,000 seats in the engineering college or medical college, when the seat was given to a student with a reserved community, he has the capability. But now the seats available are more than the number of students available in the state. Now it is happening, all the students are pushed to the college with some lot of concession, full fees concession, but they are wasting their time. So what is to be done? If we continue like this, the concept of inclusivity or social benefit, whether it will give good benefit or not, one we should think Association of Indian Universities can give the correct uh, guidance to the government to give the right policies. We, people can discuss. So I'm telling my view, the considered opinion is required to the government to take policy decisions. So mostly I'm seeing as a teacher, I'm, so I'm seeing many students who are once they join without capability, they are getting psychological fear then high level of stress, then lack of self-confidence, losing even the existing capability because of the time they spend on the four years' time without understanding anything. 
then turning as an anti-social element. That is what is happening in this present scenario. So what is to be done? In the last session, all the speakers were telling about at the young age, the students can capable of understanding anything. Any student can understand anything. So after wasting their time in the young age, we are if you are trying to teach to the students without any minimum level of knowledge from the school, it will create a great chaos because it requires a lot of potential difference. What I am thinking is all the money, whatever we are giving to this reserved community as a concession, scholarship, tuition fee waiver, everything should be sent to the primary school education and the best teachers in the country to be selected and all the downtrodden students, backward community, students should be selected and they should be taught with the highly high caliber teachers, then there will be a sustainable development happen, whatever these goals, the sustainable SG, SGD4, definitely it will happen, not immediately, it will happen at least after 20 years. Then the same students will come out and tell, Reservation is not required in the field of education. Teacher should be selected without any reservation. Then only the country will prosper. That, that, first, we should give the education for all the downtrodden societal students with the full powerful teachers. Then it will happen. To, that is what my feeling. So, Poti Nirainda, Ulagatil, Samanela, Adaya, Mudalil, Puhalbetta, Kalviyalarglai Kundu, Samadayatil, Pintangi, Avrilakke, Yella, Vasadiyodum, Palli Kudangal, Amekke Vendum. Then everything will be solved. The last session teaches whatever they have told. It's all true. But how to implement, we should take initiatives. Okay, now we have admitted all the students in the near. That is the long-term measure. But in the short-term measures, what we need to do? In the college, the students are capable of improving their skill, not capable of improving their knowledge. Knowledge skill anything is sufficient but in the industry now needs only skill not very few uh, manpower required with the high knowledge but lot of manpower required with the high skill but our education system is not promoting skill development rather we promote knowledge but it is not possible by all the students so our education system the government also now understood so they are trying to promote skill-based education, skill development in a large way. That is what we need to do. So understanding this, our Anna University is trying to revise, the revamp the curriculum totally to suit the large majority of the students, this uh, industry-based curriculum we are trying to revamp so that the large number of students will be benefited in the near future in the present scenario. But the sustainable solution is providing good education, for the downtrodden society students at the school level, primary school level. That is the sustainable development. But considering the present scenario, the short-term solution is providing skill-based education to the students who are joining professional education. So these are the measures we have been taking in Anna University in the all curriculum development and the governance, managing governance and the research innovation ecosystem. For the best students also, we need to create good ecosystem and uh, entrepreneurial development also we are we are creating in a very big way three things are required for any professional development to make a very good citizen this attitude skill and knowledge and the attitude creating attitude is most difficult but creating skill is moderate difficult creating knowledge is giving knowledge is very easy so now Many of the students, we should provide skill development, which is little difficult. Also, we should, how to provide very good attitude among the students, then only the societal change will happen and sustainable development will happen. So, to accommodate this flexible curriculum, because in a wonder one roof of this university, different kind of students are studying. The top rank students who are getting 200 out of 200 in all the subjects to just to pass more students are studying in the same degree. The same syllabus if we have, definitely they cannot learn. So, we are trying to provide highly flexible curriculum with the help of several industries. We are trying to make industry-based curriculum. So, next week we have a very good brainstorming session where we have invited some hundred 100 industries and 10 academicians, 10 scientists, 10 administrators 
and the ten uh, alumni and with the with this total number of people we are trying to create a very good industry based curriculum that is nearly some 25 to 30 verticals skill development in some 35 areas we want to develop so any student can develop skill in the particular skill so kind of syllabus first year in science subject they will be studying second year they will be studying engineering fundamental subjects alone and third year the, the syllabus one vertical they will be studying so that they can become eligible to get a job in the same skill and also we are trying to introduce six months industry based curriculum all the medical students are doing house surgeon even we have seen the agricultural ICR the morning session we have seen that uh, the students who are doing agricultural in the pra by practice only they learn many things but engineering without seeing the industry they are trying all the engineering subject that we want to remove so six months internship we are trying to bring in the curriculum itself so half the students they will be doing their internship in the seventh semester and remaining 50 percent students will be there in the do their, their internship in the eighth semester so that the industry will get continuous flow of students from the institute to the industry this six months internship definitely will help them and also this uh, vertical based one skill based curriculum only will be there for in the fifth semester sixth semester and seventh semester and we have also made some ar arrangement with the CII to create a platform jointly with Anna University and CII to arrange C that uh, internship for all the Anna University students with the industries. They have also agreed we are creating a platform in the university for that. So I think that at least in the short term requirement, the skill based education we can provide to the majority of the students who are studying in under Anna University. So these are the one thing we should know. So when we read only 10% of the things we can understand, when we hear 20% of the things we can understand, when we see 30%, when there is a PowerPoint projection, that 30% can be understood, you can understand. When we see and hear, 50% can be understood, one can understand. We see, hear and discuss 70%. And 90% what we see, hear, discuss and practice, that experiential learning is required to understand 90% of the thing, the remaining 10% when they go for job, they will understand and then they will, their wisdom also will start increasing. So this uh, practicing, this project-based learning, this experiential learning, game-based learning, lab-based courses we need to introduce, all these things will definitely increase the capability of the students to understand well. So with this, I think uh, this kind of curriculum to be brought in all the engineering and uh, other technical educations. I have reported industry does not need high scoring student for job, for every job, for every job. So that all the universities should understand and we need to provide education based on their capability. Definitely there will be a lot of, because industry job requirement is very high. They are telling the suitable candidates are only not available. This kind of education when we start giving definitely there will be a very good transformation in the engineering education and lot of students will get job in the near future. Okay, this is uh, what we are doing in the research side that we are trying to create very good research ecosystem also in, the in our university. So these are the centers we are starting to give very good research ecosystem so that very bright students also gain more than what is available in the present syllabus that is also required because when we try to promote 90 percentage of the students 10 percent of the students who are whose capability is very high the f opportunity also should be there so we are uh, bringing good ecosystem to learn many things for the bright students also we are introducing and also research ecosystem will be there when some students going for research or some teaching instead of this internship they can do project under their uh, professors who are doing research projects. So these are the ecosystem we are creating for startups and already in the last two years in our university some 17 startups, some of this Rapti, it's an electric vehicle, is suc very successful and they, they are going for some 300 crores investment they are going. To get conducive atmosphere, we are creating all these committees so that these uh, problems in this college will not be there. Okay, how to bring inclusiveness in the institutions? So all these points are there. I think uh, you all already heard many things, how to bring inclusivity in all aspects. With this, 
I thank the organizers for the wonderful opportunity given. Thank you very much.